Bro, what the hell is Lil Darky? What is this? What is this on my screen? We about to find out. As I said 11 months ago in my last video, the small dark one or Lil Darky is a complex character. Uh -huh. And honestly, I still completely agree with that standpoint. But I just felt the need to remake my last video because, well, however, unlike other artists, he applies something unique and new to the table besides recycling the same drama and rehashing it for every single song. And I mean, it's obvious at the beginning of listening to someone's music, you usually know nothing about them. But in the end, behind his lyrics, and no, I'm not talking about the K on his rifle, I'm talking about how you can notice he's an artist focused on doing what he truly loves to do, being creative and venting through what he creates. This is going to be one of those things on the outside, it looks racist as hell. But as soon as you learn the deeper context, you're like, hmm, okay, I see where you're coming from. I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm looking at, but shit, man. Let's find out. And even though not everybody may take into consideration and value what he says, that is mainly because they don't notice his lyrics are most of the time about something he disagrees with he or mental health and dealing with drug abuse in the past. Honestly, I didn't expect the last video to get big because, well, most artist videos don't do as good as everyone would expect. I can speak from experience. Yeah, Riff, Damn. how's that with Larry video treating you? It ain't my fault he's irrelevant. Anyways, Damn! I Talk your shit! Yeah, Riffro, how's that Will Lowry video treating ya? It ain't my fault he's irrelevant. Anyways, I believe it's the symphonic chaos of his songs, the tone and the art of course that goes into most of his songs that separate him from the crowd. At least for me and many people who listen to his music. Now before I get into this video, I decided this would probably be my last video on Spider Gang related content, most likely because I- What the hell is Spider Gang? I don't really feel like creating it anymore and I'd rather make commentary and gaming content. But I've made other videos on a few other artists and- Hey, I ain't gonna lie, that was kinda clean. Get anymore, clean and I'd edit. rather make commentary and gaming content. But I've made other videos on a few other clean, artists and uh, people in Spider Gang, so in case you'd like to watch those as well, I will just put a link in the comments to the playlist. Or you can just subscribe and like, that'll help out a ton too. But that being said, today I'm going to discuss why I personally like Lil Darky's music, how it's unique to me, more of who he is, and how he rose a bit in popularity. Now at the start of listening to Lil Darky, we're dropped into a void as the artist evolves with what he creates over time. He's essentially finding himself with his music. And with nothing but animations, drawings, and personality behind one's voice, it makes you reminiscent of an era long gone. So that being said... So I see a lot of uh, Indian, Hindu, um, I believe, culture. ...behind one's voice. Inspiration, so this might not even be a black character, caricature, caricature. Makes you this reminiscent of an era long... Uh, Indian caricatures, or, or maybe it's a mix. I don't know, is he mixed with Indian and black? ...long gone. So that being said... This video is the untold story of Lil Darky. I don't know shit about this guy. Spider Gang! Now let's put on something creative. For those who don't know, Lil Darky or Joshua Hamilton, born October 6, 1998, is a rapper, artist, and producer who resides in Long Beach, California. Hey, that's that old school Eminem fit. But Hamilton, man. born October 6, 1998, is a rapper. Got the hoodie, got the headband, Her artist and producer who resides in Long Beach, California. He ended up founding the collective group known as Spider Gang. He started rapping around 2016 oh, when he was 17 time? going to the name Brahmin with a whole different style. Brahmin. The most notable style is in a song titled Goonies and Boonies. To get dumb, fuck forcing it. Only with the natives I roam. So what you trying to say? Pine tree skyline. And if you and he kept making more music, but of all you can't compare. It sounded alright. Brahmin's Lil Darky, even though they're the same person, because they really had different styles. Yeah. Brahmin is his oldest known persona, while mm -hmm. <clears throat> Very res reminiscent of the, the god Rama. Being known as Brahmin, his character was blue and represented Indian gods. Yeah, and Rama. then one day during an acid trip and researching the gods, he realized that the Indian gods are supposed to be depicted as black. Mm -hmm. And in the scripture, they're said to be black as midnight. But people mm -hmm. depicted them as blue. And why may you ask? After oh, researching cool. it, he realized it's because over time, people started depicting them as blue because it makes them look more appealing. Ain't that some shit. Most people would think it's sort of terrifying and they don't want to have faith in something they fear, so... Sometimes they depict them blue in art so that you can see their Ain't facial that, features better or they look less barbaric. And so then he decided to draw his character the same as his old one, but black and therefore more defining himself and what he felt more close to than his former persona. Back before he gained popularity, growing up Joshua was a high school boy scout. Joshua was a frequent target of racial bullying, and when he Boy began Scouts. attending film school, there was an issue with- I did Boy Scouts. Uh, I was a Weeblo. That's before you actually become a Boy Scout. They were having like a little candy drive. You know, you go out, you sell the candy. Uh, I sold all the candy, and I just so happened to quit Boy Scouts, and I kept all the money. Administration that is still unknown to this day. 
It eventually led him to dropping out and creating his more known persona today, Lil Darky, which is the personification of his suffering from what he went through while growing up. A lot of people think his drawn character and persona is depicting a black person, but it's not. And his response to that- See what I'm saying? I was like, it, it, it looks like some racist shit, but I could be wrong, you know? Open mind. Interview of cult classic is, I can take something that is my culture and is beautiful to me because in Indian culture, our gods are black skin in the tech. I can take something that's my culture and make it beautiful. And you can look at something that's been ugly, that's been evil. And like, I can take it away and it's not fucked up anymore stuff, because I bro. feel like there's nothing racist about this character. Like if you look at him and you're like, that's like a black guy then I feel like you're the one with the weird preconceived notion in your yeah. head. Mm. Basically. See, but the thing is, I mean, it's America. America is founded on slavery. So a lot of people will see, like, I saw it. I was like, man, what is this shit? But it's like, there's no way this can be some just like some blatant racist shit. So that's why I clicked on it. There's no way this could just be some straight up just racist shit. So, yeah, I get what you're saying. But at the same time, bro, it's like you're Indian. You're paying homage to your ancestry, your gods, your um, your beliefs. But... A lot of people don't know about Indian culture. Um, so it's a hundred percent. A lot of people see that just be like, oh, that's blackface because they don't know shit about Indian culture. You're like, that's like a black guy that I feel like you're the one with the weird preconceived notion in your yeah. head. Basically, there's a bunch of people who are on TikTok who just automatically assumed he's white and thought his character was racist when he's not white at all. And it just didn't all make sense. It didn't add up. So if you really that's just still think that his character's racist without even getting to know him like the people that were on TikTok, because in his culture, the gods are solid black. The red stripe on his character is for Spider Gang. If you see this character and think he's supposed to represent black people, then maybe you're jumping Nah, when I saw the red stripe, I'm thinking, man, is this like some Spartan shit? Too quick to conclusions, and judging his character or persona too quick. And oh my god, a lucid talking about race? That's totally unepic, bro. Now personally, if you see a problem with Darky for what his character looks like, then clearly you have the mental capacity of a grain of sand, and are making it a race <laughs> problem in general. And the sad part is, people actually do have a problem with it, and people attempted to cancel him on TikTok for multiple things. Canceled on, bro, TikTok's like Twitter, it's not a real place. Switch is honestly just stupid. So why don't we just get into it? Oh, what? If you don't make money from the site, it's not a real place. I felt back there were groups of people who tried to cancel Darky. They could all try to cancel Darky, but in the wise words of simply not giving a fuck, you can't cancel someone who doesn't care. Now let me sum this up for you. Mm, you can if you get deplatformed, but really you can't get canceled as long as you keep producing content. That's the secret. The more you produce content, the less cancelable you are because as soon as you drop some fire, people are going to be like, man, fuck it. You know how many people hate Keemstar? Keemstar keep posting, Keemstar has a fan base. You can't cancel Keemstar. You. Essentially, we all know how TikTok works. It's I, full of people who dance to songs and people who create wrongs. It's essentially full of people who look for things to spread negativity towards. Mm -hmm. And the second one of his songs blew up on TikTok, some of these people were upset because he said the N-word or bad. So they tried to make out any sort of direction they could just to take it in order to cancel him by saying he was racist or homophobic. So people that aren't black saying the N-word in hip-hop I personally feel that if they're from that lifestyle, they should be able to say it. The word originated from slavery. Black people took the word and made it something positive. But the only people that really use it is people that are in the struggle. They in the streets, you know. A lot of people that are professional in the black scene, they try and avoid the word because it makes white people uncomfortable. But when you in the streets, you face in danger every day. You could give a damn about a white dude in a suit living in the 50th floor of some building in Manhattan. You don't give a damn about that. You in these trenches. So if homeboy from the trenches, if his homies cool with him saying the N word, they cool with him saying the N word. I got nothing to do with it. I know some white boys that be in the streets in that gang shit and they be saying the N word. They in that life. What am I? I'm gonna say, oh, you can't say it, you white. You don't give up. The, the race got once you in the trenches, race got very little to do with it. Very, very little. Like, of course, it's still gonna be some racism here and there. Like, not even racism, like prejudice prejudice. Like, if a black dude, he with his white homie, his white homie say the N-word for the first time, he probably gonna look at him like, man, what the hell? But he if he with that shit, that rah-rah, you know, that life, fuck it, he got the pass. He said whatever you want, he from here. He out here. He putting in work. I don't give a fuck what he say. He, he with me. So if homeboy with that shit, you can say the N word. That's just my opinion. If I if y'all don't like my opinion, it is what it is. 
you can be anyone. You can be gay, straight, black, white, yeah, and, any and color. That, and any I think whatever, at the end of the day, you know? I think at the end of the day, that's like some good advice too. Is just mm-hmm. like as cliche as it sounds, like just be yourself because that's what people are gonna att- attract. Like it's gonna attract mm-hmm. the most people for real. Because like only you could be yourself. Facts. Yeah. Exactly, and that's like what it comes down to. Shit too, like. Me being racially ambiguous. Most people don't even know I'm Indian by like looking at me or like no. part Indian. I when I saw him, I was like, he looks kind of Indian, but he looks like a mix. Yeah, and just like oh, assume what race he is and shit. So then I say nigga and shit with my friends because like, you with that be niggas. But then like people like hit me up and they're like, why are you saying nigga? You're not black, and it's like you don't have to be black to say it. Yeah, like be mad then. Cause like I'm not gonna change who I am for you, you know. Because it's like that's who I am. He's a bisexual man of color, and they think his character does blackface because he's not black, or that he's homophobic when he literally made a song called Trans Appreciation Day, and he's bisexual himself. People need to calm down and just forget about it. I mean, I can see if their argument was valid, but it isn't clearly when they're trying to find something to cancel that isn't there. He's one of the few rappers who speaks his mind and doesn't rap about meaningless bullshit, which makes him a more open artist to his audience. In the middle of 2019, Spotify temporarily removed his music, and Instagram even blocked his account after he posted a cover of the Buddhist swastika, which is a symbol of peace, balance, and unity in his religion. Of course, the platform's actions led to concern over who has the right to determine which songs are controversial and should be given a platform. After all, Spotify and SoundCloud pride themselves on being a place which allow anyone to share their music. But they, they don't care about that shit. They, what's making money? Oh, Black History Month? Let's make some money off the blacks. Oh, it's Gay Month? Let's make some money off the gays. Let's go ahead and promote the gays, promote the blacks. But as soon as it's not cost effective, as soon as they lose in sales, I don't give a fuck. Then we had Darkie over here who was taken down because they have mistaken a symbol of peace for a symbol of hatred. In a series of since deleted Darkie tweets, he said plenty of art is offensive, that doesn't mean it should be censored. And he shouldn't have to water down or censor his perspective just to stay on a website. Lil well, Darkie isn't someone people can cancel. Mm, let me hear that again. Shouldn't have to water down or censor his perspective just to stay on a website. Shouldn't? He shouldn't have to? Yeah, he shouldn't have to. But if you want to stay on a private owned website, Bro, you gotta play ball. Well, Dark- Unless you're gonna create your own website like Donald Trump did using Getter and all that other shit. You don't create your own site. Shit. Gotta play ball, homie. He isn't someone people can cancel easily because he's someone who doesn't cleanly fit into any category, whether it's social, sexually, politically, whatever. Because he's just a non-hostile person all around, and only looks for positive ways to impact people of his audience. I've had the chance to speak with Lil Darky a while back after I made my first video on him, and I can say that although I only knew him for a call, I got the sense that his intentions were too chill to become negative. He just was a nice guy all around who uses what he creates as his and his listeners' outlet to express their frustrations and disappointments. Darky said everyone wants to be an individual, but no one has the balls to actually do it, and that's why he does this. People love it, so he likes that he can spread positivity that's in good. people's lives. That's good, bro. When your art positively affects people, you're on the right path. I'll leave it up to Bryson to discuss the creation of Spider Gang. The idea of Spider Gang started around early. Okay, that's an, that. I I don't really need to hear more about it. I don't need to hear about Spider Gang. I just wanted to know who the hell little darky was. I get the I get the concept. Um, yeah, I don't need to go deep into this guy's life. Like the mindset. I mean, I guess I'll listen to a bit of the mindset, but I pretty much. Yeah, everything. It doesn't just range in music, but in art as well. You could get a heart pumping song or one that makes you think deeper and refined of negativity throughout his entire discography. And the more you listen to what he puts out, the more you see the deeper meanings behind his words and how he portrays the way he feels for each and every song, especially if you reverse one of his songs. If you reverse one of his songs, you can get something like this. I have accepted death. I have accepted my place in this reality. I have accepted that everything is temporary. All right, all right. I don't want to get copyrighted. I got, I got it. I got it. I get the gist. Little Darky seemed like a cool ass dude. Not gonna cap. He seemed cool as hell. Link down below if you want to see the rest of this video. This actually is a great video. Great editing. Great writing. Great microphone quality. And I'm glad you dove into the pro. Uh, the, I guess the history or more like the the concept of Little Darky. And you got all that, you put all that in the front so I can understand, bro. And I appreciate it. And then the people that want to dive more into Lil Darky, you got it for the rest of the video, man. That's that's some great shit. What's your name? Elucid. Elucid, bro. I'm going to go ahead and hit a like on that, bro. That's a fire-ass video. Anyways. Yeah, I, I'm glad Lil Darky ain't no racist shit on the internet. <laughs> 
uh, good shit, everybody that that was involved in this video. Little darky, keep doing your thing. I got, like I said, should you have to change or dumb down your art to be on the platform? Should you? No. Would you have to if you want a bigger reach? Sure, but little darky seems like the type of person who is just happy with whoever he has, which is actually pretty good. You know, you're not gonna be driving around in Lamborghinis, but if you don't care about Lamborghinis, then I guess it don't matter, right? So. That's pretty good. I like when artists actually care about the art and not just the profit. It's kind of hard to mix the two. That's just how life is. But great video. It's your boy, Miss. Comment, rate, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.